R22 is a refrigerant that's been used for decades. Uh, now it's starting to get phased out because of depleting of the ozone layer. Um, been mandated by the government to quit producing it. Uh, you know, you're starting to see equipment produced with R410 that uh, is environmental friendly, uh, that uh, all equipment is, uh, well, residential equipment has been manufactured with. R22 um, is in the stages of being phased out. Uh, by 2020, the, uh, we'll be able to buy any virgin R22, but there will be available uh, recycled R22. And how long that's going to last, it's, it's unknown. I mean, it just all depends on how much is turned in and recycled uh, through contractors and whatnot. Um, so, you know, it's really unknown how long R22 is going to be around. Five years ago, you could buy a refrigerant at, uh, right at $10 a pound. It depends on how much of refrigerant you need, how many pounds your equipment holds. Um, and the, it varies. Um, you know, equipment could have five pounds in it, in residential, five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. And, it, and the pricing is somewhere between 45 to $55 a pound. I've got a unit that's got R22 in it. It's like my house, for instance. i got a unit that's 17 years old. And it's got R22 in it. And I'm going to jump in my truck or call a contractor and, and want to buy another unit because it's got R22 in it? No. Uh, now, if I start having a lot of expense involved in repairing leaks uh, or have to replace it, uh, any kind of coils or anything like that, yes, I'm not going to do that repair because of the fact R22 is going up. That should be the determining factor in the consumer's uh, decision on replacing equipment. It's got R22 in it. Don't replace it if it's running. Don't want to replace it because, uh, say, it's, I got to have one R410 in it. You know, you, you look at the term factor, what's going to be the cost behind repairs uh, that's, that's needed for their, their equipment. Yeah, there's um, different manufacturers out there um, coming up with a uh, a substitute, I guess we could call it a substitute for R22. That um, different uh, vendors are saying different things about their blend. Of course, um, does it work as good as R22? Um, some of it's real close uh, to fitting in to where it needs to to, uh, to where it's taking place of R22 and performing the same way. In other words, getting the maximum amount of uh, cooling out of it that you can out of a, out of a unit. Um, you know, to me, it's nothing as good as the original, uh, but there is stuff out there that uh, that is being made by different manufacturers that says that it works as well. Uh, now, if, we, if we're talking residentially, um, you know, the cost in, in doing the changeover is not that big. Uh, now, when you go and start doing commercial work, you got large equipment uh, that uh, requires a lot of, of uh, refrigerant, then uh, we need to, you know, you need to look at that substitute refrigerant because R22 is so expensive and you've got a large expense there and, and gassing it back up, repairing a leak, putting refrigerant back in it, you need to look at that option of going with uh, substitute refrigerant. You cannot uh, change a system that's running R, or running refrigerant uh, 22 R22. Uh, you cannot change it to R410. Um, it, it just it doesn't work. Uh, you have to. You can use the substitute for the R22, which is not as expensive, but uh, it does not work because of the different um, designs. The coils are designed to run R22 or or R410. Meter devices are designed to run, or not run, operate, I should say operate with R410 or R22. The machine are just not applicable for different refrigerants. You've got to use the refrigerant that it was designed for to use.